Hello everyone, it's Frank Rotz again. Wanted to do a video, very important, uh, perhaps the most important video that I have done to date. Um, I was communicating on YouTube with Northern Mike a little bit and we came to a really profound conclu conclusion. Why are inline spinners so currently ignored today in the world of I was thinking bass fishing in particular, but I think he was going along the lines because he has more of a multi-species type of a channel with lots of fish on it, more than mine. Um, but it's a really good question, and sometimes the obvious eludes us. Um, to give you a little brief history on inline spinners, uh, these types of spinners were actually the original spinner bait in earlier print um, these were spinner baits when they were referring to them and they have a lot of distinct advantages and really only one minor drawback that I can conclude so um, your first real positive advantage to using inline spinners is if you lose one they're cheap these run usually between three and six dollars. Some are a little less, some are a little more. Um, there's maybe some store brands that are a little less that may work just as well as the name brands. Um, I'm gonna focus in on the three key ones that I know a lot about. Um, so one of your big advantages is gonna be cost. Um, another one, number two, it's spring. It's 33 degrees right now in Northern Indiana. It's cold in a lot of parts of the country. Once this ice breaks, you're gonna maybe encounter some cold, clear water. There's a good chance of it. And the thin, longer profiles of these baits, these are just better profiles than spinner baits. Time and time again throughout my life, I would throw a spinner bait in an area, and an inline spinner would be the producer early in the year. So we've got your cost, and we've got cold, clear water. Um, number three, uh, these work well throughout a huge portion of the year so if you're talking in the midwest you're talking march april may and into june as the weeds come up um so march april may june no matter where you're at in the country you're talking four months where these could be probably your number one well that one got tangled up where these types of baits can be your number one producers which is actually pretty amazing um People fish for them for trout and different things, but when it, when it comes to bass or any game fish, whether you're fishing a pond, pit, reservoir, slough, it doesn't matter the body of water. These are just as versatile as your bigger spinner baits. So that's another huge key. Uh, they cast good on a lot of different lighter and medium light rods. They cast great on everything from a, even a four and a half foot ultralight all the way to a seven foot. I tend to use a seven foot high sensitivity rod, medium. I use a G Loomis, very fine tuned rod. I would recommend a medium light for anybody else for uh, game fish. So there's that advantage. Um, they're great for crappies. Um, these are fantastic for big crappies. If you don't, if you're newer to pan fishing and you do more pan fishing and you want to try something different, you'll get lots of big crappie on inlines, which is really cool. A lot of people think crappie and fishing for min with minnows. And there may be a couple others, a couple other key advantages that I talk about while I go through what I like about the three models that I'm familiar with. But just an important note, your only real downside for bass fishing would be that most of the bass you could get would be smaller. So I don't know if I mentioned on an earlier video, the best day, best potential bass day I ever had fishing. I was fishing a semi-private body of water and I was getting a bite every 45 minutes, then every half hour, then 15 minutes, and that window kept getting narrower and narrower and narrower on this MEPS Comet Minnow uh, Silver Number 3. Silver Number 3. And it was the craziest thing. It was mid-May. Some of the fish were spawning. There were others that were just feeding because they all don't spawn at the same time, and they were paving the parking lot, and I had to move my vehicle and I really couldn't walk back to get into that spot. In hindsight, I should have trudged away to get back there. But I mean, I was just slaying fish in the Midwestern Northern part of the country. A bait that has about this length and profile is going to be really, really deadly up until they start 
feeding it, you know, when there's vegetation because these trebles will hang up. So the three baits that I'm most familiar with are the ones that I just went over is the Meps Comet Minnow, a uh, big crappie producer, but for bass, like I said, all the way up until mid-June. Uh, it's not, they don't work quite so well. They will work in the fall for smaller bass, but they're going to be smaller schooling ones because your fall bass are going to want a bigger profile, a bigger bait. But these are just awesome. Uh, they cast pretty good uh, on, on ladder tackle. Six pound test, nothing heavier than eight. What happens is these, a lot of people don't like these trebles because they catch on vegetation. Use the lightest sensitive, most sensitive rod you had that, that you're going to have a little backbone with. Um, sensitivity and castability should come first though. And when you actually feel this bait actually hang up on vegetation, if you snap it forward, you'll get lots and lots of strikes. And that's something I have been using them because I switched over to crankbaits, but that's something that I was doing to get a lot of bites. These are really cool baits. Um, they're one of the best game fish, proven game fish and bass producers of all time. Hardly anybody throws them for largemouth. Definitely of any lure that I'm going to talk about uh, that I have any experience with, the Comet Minnow is going to be your absolute number one. Number two is what does this look like? Not a, not much of anything. This is a Lure Jensen Shyster. It's an old design. I got some for free. I believe this is a quarter ounce, and it is. This is a quarter ounce. It's a little smaller. Um, it's a little bit more subdued than the Comet, but a bass killer. I mean, this this is one of the, even though I've probably fished this lure the least out of lures that I've been successful for bass with, I've probably caught the most has a real high ratio of catch to usage, and I just highly recommend them, and they don't cost a lot of money. Now your third bait that I'm gonna talk about is a little different, because a lot of people like to throw casting gear, and they want something. These shafts on these baits can bend pretty easy. Not so much with this one, but on your MEPS with the longer one. And a lot of people wanna fish more around wood or different parts of the country where there's wood or timber if you're targeting areas like this. And what I like to use, I've only caught one bass 18 inches on this because I haven't really used them. Like I said, I started doing more crankbait fishing than inline spinners. This is a number three Terminator. They make an inline spinner and uh, it has a titanium shaft. So you're, you're, you're not gonna be bending that if you bump the stump or something like that. The, the shaft won't bend just like the Terminator spinner baits. And it's Texas rig with this minnow body. You could experiment with other minnow bodies. And it just rotates. Like I said, it's got it's got a little beefier profile than a little chunkier profile than most of your other uh, bass baits on the market. They make it in a five eighths. You can cast this on a bait caster pretty good. I've done it. The five eighths will cast better. Um, this is great for ripping through vegetation. Um, it catches pike, walleye. It's a. I know for a fact that. Uh, one of the most expert fishermen I know says it's really good for best one of the best if not the best multi-species hard baits he's fished um, these are great um, and if you're cut if you're through weeds they have the Oklahoma blade which is a cross between the Indiana Colorado and it snaps through vegetation really good just a real fun bait to throw a little bit more expensive than the others but you're paying for the titanium and the Terminator craftsmanship on it now there's that pretty much covers everything. There's no real reasons. Oh, and of course, you know, these baits, they tend to be on the smaller side. Um, they're not gonna, they don't weigh a lot and they're not gonna take up a lot of room in your tackle box. If you're a stream angler, particularly stream trout fishermen love these. But if you're fishing kayak, canoe, john boat, somewhere you don't have, you're, you're hiking, you use your backpack, you don't have a lot of room. These are unbelievably great tools to use. And even if you have a bigger, you're fishing in a bigger boat, they don't take up much room. There's lots of, there's a few videos on how to fish for bass with these, but they're, they're, they're the most underutilized and misunderstood family of baits for largemouth. Smallmouth anglers in streams tend to utilize them a little bit more. But there's lots of other styles too out there. I know, I don't know if they still make this one. It's a Terminator without a body. Um, i give a shout out. I couldn't find it real. I was in a hurry to do this video. Uh, Panther Martin has a 3.8. I caught an 18 inch bass the first time I used the Panther Martin. Um, Blue Fox makes this. It's literally a Rapala minnow with something like this on it. So, you know, just a great uh, springtime option. You want to use a, a quality ball bearing swivel. I use the Spro size zero um, and I've never had any problems. And again, these aren't the least expensive swivels on the market, but they're not the most expensive. Um, they're a good mid, swivels get expensive, especially when you start talking about Sampo. Um, but you don't want to use a non-bearing swivel or an inexpensive one because that blade is going to be spinning in a 360. And if you don't have a good swivel, it will jack up your line on a spinning reel horrendously or a bait casting reel. 
So that's pretty much it for inlines. They really have a rich history. All is always new. I know the, the underspin baits that have the, your jig head and the blade underneath made a, a brief comeback um, for a little bit. And I'm predicting that old is new with bass fishing and that inline spinners are gonna be making a comeback soon just because it, it, it's about time and it's been a while. When I started bassing, they kind of went through a little resurgence. Um, they were a much more common recommendation when you had smaller mom and pop tackle shops like I used to work in, just because they were an easy recommendation. People would get bites on a lot of the stuff when you worked in a small place like that. People wouldn't get bites. They didn't, they didn't think you knew what you were talking about. And I was always confident recommending these inlines. But try a shyster or definitely, at least if you're gonna try one, try your Comet Minnow. If you want a beefier profile, go with your Terminator. That pretty much sums it up for inlines. If you have any questions, let me know. If you wanna know more stuff about lure logic like this, you like this kind of stuff, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, my channel's gotten a lot more subscriptions and I think I'm at 72 now from where I started at. Started the channel in May. Thank you for everyone uh, that's subscribed. It's been much appreciated. Um, got to get that magic 1000 mark now. It seems like everyone's in a mad rush on YouTube too. I'm really not because I'll get there eventually. I want a quality channel. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. Thank you everyone and take care and uh, best of spring fishing in 2018.